another hot summer afternoon in Atlanta, Georgia. Even though it's Saturday, Norfolk Southern's Inman Yard is still busy. Trains are being assembled and broken down all over this facility. Here you can find all kinds of rolling stock hauling different cargo, from timber to intermodal containers. But I'm here to see something that's pretty uncommon in the South and frankly, all over the U.S. It's a locomotive wearing arguably the most recognizable paint scheme of all time. I'm talking about Santa Fe's legendary war bonnet colors. But like most rail fanning adventures, we're gonna have to do a little waiting first. Not every train stops here, and the one passing through now is hauling auto racks. Next up, intermodal containers with an Electromotive SD70 ACE up front. Of course, you don't have to wait very long to see special paint schemes around here. These so-called eco units wear a green version of the Norfolk Southern livery. They can be controlled remotely by an employee with a special belt pack. And this odd looking machine is called a slug. It doesn't have a diesel engine and is instead electrically powered by the locomotive it's connected to. Now, one of the cool things about Inman Yard is that it's right next to the CSX WNA mainline. Here you'll see these two competitors operating side by side. Okay, enough waiting. Here's the train we want. NS265 headed to BNSF territory in Memphis, Tennessee. Number 712 may say BNSF on the side, but the engine's paint scheme screams Santa Fe. It was among the last units to be painted in the war bonnet colors. Before merging with Burlington Northern, Santa Fe brought back this paint scheme as part of its Superfleet campaign, which began in 1989. Look at this locomotive's so-called gullwing cab. This was a feature unique to Santa Fe and later BNSF. I'm not entirely sure why they did this. I've read it was because of clearance issues at a coal load out the railroad served. You can see the trailing GE engines don't have a cab like this. This GE C44-9W was built in 1997 after the Santa Fe Burlington Northern merger. And believe it or not, this is not the first time I've seen war bonnets in Atlanta. I saw several two miles away at CSX's Howell Yard back in November 2020. Sadly, I don't know what happened to these. You can see they have PRLX or Progress Rail markings on them. Hopefully the units didn't end up in the scrapyard. Long before any of these locomotives were built, the first engine to sport the iconic red, silver, and yellow was the Electromotive Corporation E1. And let's face it, the streamliners definitely wore it best. Now, BNSF did try to evolve this paint scheme, but it just wasn't the same. Unfortunately, these days, there just aren't many war bonnets around anymore. Luckily, the paint scheme is still very recognizable, even by non-rail fans. Perhaps you had a toy painted in war bonnet colors growing up or a model like this HO scale GE-840BW. But no matter how you were introduced to this legendary railroad, it will live on as an icon of American history. <laughs>